Tokyo last year. The 23-year-old, not in the form of uh, 12 months or so ago, that's for sure. She was only 11th in Eugene at the World Championships. There she is, Perut Chemutai, the first Ugandan woman ever to win an Olympic medal. It has no other world-class times. Many steeplechasers these days are complete runners. They're great on the flat at 1,500, 3,000, 5,000. She has nothing else in her armory but great steeplechase ability. She is a best of 9.01. I can tell you that nine women in history have broken nine minutes. Four have broken nine minutes this year. But there was a very strong British duo in this race. Lizzie Bird there for England and Amy Pratt, who set her GB records, British records, in the heats and final in Eugene at the World Championships, where she finished in seventh place. Have good chances of medals here. Chemu Tai, a bit of an unknown force, really, after her form at the World Championships. Jacqueline Chepkowicz, watch her, the youngest in the race by five years, the Kenyan. She's just 18, the world under 20 champion in Nairobi last year. Could be a real danger. From the so let's take a look at these athletes. Uh, the not a large athlete, Elish Flanagan, went out in her heat in Tokyo last year. Hasn't broken 10 minutes this year, but at her best, almost down to 9.30, as you could see from that. Brielle Erbacher of Australia, coached by her mum, Jody, works for the family business, runs for the Darling Downs Club. And there is Amy Pratt, the British record holder. Went out in the heat in Tokyo, but how she's come on. She came seventh at the World Championships in Eugene with a really strong finish. It was a fabulous performance from her in Eugene. There's Nilani uh, Ratnayaka of Sri Lanka. National record holder for them, ran 9.40 to win the national championships on the 9th of April. Some while ago now, Amy Cashin of Australia went down the heat of the world championships in Eugene. But at 9.21, she's very much a world-class competitor. Watch her. This should be pretty tight, this race. Elizabeth Bird of uh, Great Britain, Shaftesbury Barnett Harriers, born in Manila in the Philippines, coached by Pat McCurry, and ninth in Tokyo last year at the Olympic Games. She has best of 9.19. There is Chemutai, the Ugandan. Bit of a mystery over her form. Fifth in the World Championships three years ago, but the Olympic champion in spectacular fashion with that personal best of 9 0 win, 9 0 1 to win in Tokyo last year. And Jacqueline Chepkoet. I think she's a bit of a dark horse, this young lady. Only 9 21 this year, and that is her lifetime best. But for the 18 year old, it was at Nairobi at altitude at about 6,000 feet. So that means that she can go a great deal faster. There's no doubt about that. Again, Chep Kovic of Kenya, like the Olympic champion Chemutai, has no, no world-class times of the distances. <laughs> so where they go, a small field, but it promises to be a fascinating race, this one. The uh, English duo have got to give their best here to live with the best of the East Africans. And I'll tell you what, Chep Kovic has laid down her case straight away. Look at that. Goodness me, 150 metres run, and she's away and gone. Jacqueline Chepkowicz went out in the heat of the World Championships, but she's a different runner here, that's perfectly clear. That's a 50 metre lead with less than 40 seconds on the clock. Talk about getting a slap in the face from one of your competitors. This is such a shock for the rest of that pack. They must be running. what on earth do they do if these two or one of them comes back? Then, of course, there'll be a chance of getting a silver medal. But at the moment, the gold and the silver are 50 or 60 metres further up the track. And uh, Chep Kovic, the Kenyan leading, the youngest in the field, she's only 18. The Olympic champion from Uganda tucked in behind her. I wonder if she knew this was coming, but clearly she was prepared for it because she's gone with it, almost tripping over the heels of the Kenyan. Well, it's an extraordinarily bold start from one so young, but... You don't happen to fluke upon a world junior title. And Jacqueline Chepkoech has grabbed this race by, race by the scruff of the neck. But Perez Chemetai, the Olympic champion, only 11th in Eugene, as you said, Tim, should be hugely disappointed with that. It's over seven seconds back to Amy Pratt. And Amy Pratt secured a massive national record when she finished seventh in Eugene. So Pratt in third actually beat the Olympic champion in that final in Eugene. And I guess the only danger here, Tim, they are two world-class performers, but have they gone a little bit too hard too early? 
Well, I suppose the other danger is that the pack of six behind them start watching each other and running for the bronze and don't try to close this gap. Who's going to lead the pack and make do the hard work to drag them back to this duo out in front? It's almost as though this has been choreographed, arranged. Chemutai, the uh, Olympic champion from Uganda, has taken uh, her turn at the front now after uh, Jacqueline Chepkoich of Kenya did her stint for about 45, 50 seconds. So they are working together, it would seem, whether or not there's been any verbal agreement. And the rest of this field, with Amy Pratt uh, leading the pack, leading the chase, are uh, being pulled asunder because they have got to start running as hard as they possibly can and hope upon hope that these two, or one of them at least, comes back. But they're loping along, looking very, very comfortable. And what is fascinating about these uh, two women is they are specialist steeplechasers. I've been looking at their cards. Neither of them has any world-class times at 1,500, 3,000 on the flat, 5,000, 10,000, nothing. Just steeplechase, absolutely focused on the barriers. It's the, one of the toughest events in the entire program of track and field athletics. And they are supreme specialists. Tim, I think Chip Koech perhaps sensed that that pack of four being led by Amy Pratt with the other English girl, Lizzie Bird, and also the two Australians, Erbacher and Cashin, I think the Kenyans sensed that they were beginning to close because as she came round with five laps to go, she suddenly put a little burst of acceleration and went past pair of Chemitai and is setting the tone once again. If they can stay away, then we've got a fascinating four-way battle for the bronze. No English woman has ever won a medal in this event and no Australian has been on the podium since they won a silver and a bronze way back in Melbourne and they have extended their lead once again. What a huge gap this is and what can this closing pack, what can this pack do to try and close what looks like an unbridgeable gap now? Well, the first kilometre, 259.9, that's why there's a gap. They're moving at sub-nine-minute tempo. It's really quick, it's really aggressive. Chemutai leading through 1K, under three minutes, and that is simply a pace that even the fabulously informed Amy Pratt cannot live with. Now, the uh, quickest European this year is Luisa Gega of Albania, who was a fabulous fifth at the World Championships. But uh, Amy Pratt, apart from a French athlete who ran really fast in the semis, at the World Championships is the next best European and it'll be a fascinating to see how well she can go at uh, the European Championships if she chooses to go there after the tiredness that will in inevitably uh, be over her through uh, from Eugene and here. If she goes to Munich at the Europeans, I'd love to see a good, good account of herself there. But these two still, what, 50 metres ahead, maybe a little bit more. Pratt in third place, leading the chase. Lizzie Bird there, right on her shoulders. The Shaftesbury Barnet Harrier. And uh, one of the Australians there in fifth place as well. That's uh, Amy Cashin, who's uh, right there. Cashin is a 9.21 performer. Not much slower than the British pairing. Lizzie Bird is a 9.19 performer. Amy Pratt has elevated herself to real world class with a British record in that final in Eugene, 9.15. And at the front there, just sense a little bit of a faltering from the Ugandan, the Olympic champion, Perez Chemutai. Now, why is that? It's strange, isn't it? Uh, her season's been strange, Rob, as we see the English duo trying to close them down, because she has run 9.05 this year. She ran that up for the Prefontaine meeting back on the 25th of May in Eugene, and yet when she returned to Eugene a couple of months later, 11th place. Yes, yeah, she hasn't been able to build on that Olympic title in terms of her consistency. It's uh, just over, or just around about six seconds there. I think there might have been a faller, one of the Australians. It wasn't catching. She's trying to get in the mix for the bronze. It was the other Australian, Erbacher, who's now back up on her feet, the Oceanian champion. It has been a strange season for Pera Chemitai, but I tell you what, they'll be getting so, so excited in Uganda. She's an iconic figure in Ugandan sport. And remember, Dorcas Inzakuru of Uganda became the first Commonwealth champion. This event added to the programme for women in 2006. But look at this, the two East African nations side by side. This is going to be a fascinating conclusion. Well, the second kilometre, a 3.08. They went through 2K in 6.08. They slowed a little bit through that second kilometre. And in fact, the gap, if anything, may have closed five or 10 metres, but not by much as the English duo now separate 
and it's actually Lizzie Bird who's moved into third place and is beginning to separate herself from Amy Pratt. She might be heading for the bronze medals. We get to the latter stages of this one. The uh, reigning champion for about another two minutes is Aisha Prott of Jamaica. That was a huge upset when she won in 2018 on the Gold Coast. And Chematai's fallen. She's really feeling the fatigue. She crashed over that oh. barrier, Tim, went down, and now she's letting her adrenaline fly. And she's doing well here to get back into this race. So we had a faller in the form of the Australian Erbacher, but the woman in second place, the Olympic champion, has gone down and has lost touch with the leader. There's Bird. What a battle for the bronze and the silver now. Well, that's an indication of fatigue creeping in, isn't it? When you're tired in the steeplechase, those errors happen. And uh, you really pay in spectacular fashion trying to clear those barriers. If you smack into them, they don't budge. You do. Your flesh and bone moves, not the barrier itself. They're very heavy indeed. Well, Chep Kovic, the reigning world under-20 champion, surely heading for gold now after that fall halfway round the penultimate lap from Pedro Chemutai. And what a run this is from Lizzie Bird. Ninth at the Olympic Games last year, the 27-year-old could be heading for a personal best here. The 2K time, remember, 6.08. How quick will this final lap be covered on this final kilometre? We're in for a spectacular conclusion here because, yes, it looks like the World Junior Champion is heading for the gold, but watch Lizzie Bird in third. No English woman has ever won a medal in this event, and she's closing in on the Olympic champion. She is indeed there. Send her a picture. Lizzie Bird in the white and red of England. The crowd on their feet, roaring her on. That gap was 50 or 60 metres for most of the race. Then, of course, the Olympic champion, Pedro Chemita, had that awful fall a lap ago. And Lizzie Bird closing right up on the Ugandan. Bird moves into second place, and she will get a massive surge of adrenaline from that move and from the roar of the crowd as Chep Kovic eases into the straight now, heading surely for the Commonwealth goal. But watch the clock. This is going to be quick. The uh, fastest time in the Commonwealth Games, that, of course, held by uh, Nzikuru in that initial version of the Steve Chase in the Commonwealth Games. 9.21 is the Commonwealth record. She's going to smash that. And Lizzie Bird closing all the time. Kenya take gold. England a fabulous silver. And Uganda, the Olympic champion, back in third place. Well, I'll tell you what, she had an awful fall and she's hobbling. And Amy Pratt comes home for fourth place there. But uh, I'll tell you what, in the words of my old colleague back in the 1980s, Colin Reitz, who took a world championship bronze medal in the steeplechase in the inaugural world championships when uh, Henry Marsh fell on the home straight when heading for third place and Colin E's passed him clearing the barrier okay and he was interviewed afterwards as he said well you've got to clear the barriers haven't you he, he, he. that was his comment that was as subtle as was needed I remember watching that well it was one of my abiding memories of the inaugural world athletics championships all credit there to Perif Chemetai for pulling herself up off the ground. I think Lizzie Bird was closing in on her anyway, but the acceleration she produced over the last 600 metres was roared on by the crowd. It was a brilliant effort. She's broken her PB, Lizzie Bird, 9.17. That is an absolutely staggering performance. Chemetai's really hurt herself. She's done well to carry on and finish that race on the podium, the Olympic champion. But what a run by Bird to come through and separate the two East Africans with the first medal by an English woman in this event. Well, that's a terrible shame for Pella Chemutai. Looks like she's really hurt herself. She must have been in agony. And the Australian, her Brielle Erbacher, well, she's had a tough old night too. She must have been the fall-up earlier on in the race, but determined to carry on the 23-year-old. Her mum, Jody, I'm sure, will be in the crowd. And her teammates from the Darling Downs Club back in Queensland will be uh, so upset to see that result for her. But she'll be back for more. She's young and full of spirit, clearly. But Kenya celebrating gold in the event that they feel they own. They've won eight of the 12 uh, medals in this event in the pro four previous editions of the Commonwealth Games. Well, now they have a ninth medal out of 15. And Lizzie Bird is on cloud nine. I don't think she can believe it. Uh, Coach Pat McCurry deserves a massive pat in the back for getting it right here. That is quite wonderful.
went out in her heat at the World Championships where she ran 9.23. That was still a solid run. But, Rob, you're right, a personal best, 9.17 here. Only a couple of seconds off that uh, British record of Amy Pratt. Chemetai took such a heavy fall. It was a brilliant run by Bird for second. All credit to Chemetai for carrying on. Watch on the left of picture. Fatigue was setting in. OK, this isn't the fall. This is the moment that Bird went past her. And actually, if it had been another half a lap, Amy Pratt might well, of course, caught Perrot Chemetai. I thought Chemetai might struggle with that last water jump, but she managed to vault it in her own slightly unique way. Pratt was just a little bit too far behind to make it two English women on the podium. But Jacqueline Chepkoech, what a talent she is. World junior champion. And at the tender age of 18, she's taken the Commonwealth title. Brilliant performance by the Kenyan. Two big goals for that young Kenyan. What a talent they have there. I wonder how long it'll be before she joins that sub nine minute club. Just nine women in history have ever broken nine minutes. Here's the fall. And she completely misjudges that. Too close to the barrier. Takes off too close to the barrier. The technique of uh, many of these East African athletes is uh, anything but textbook. But it doesn't matter because normally they go around in lightning fast times and uh, take medals and titles and records. But that looked very, very painful indeed. It was a heavy fall. She almost went over sideways, just clipped it with her foot. Well, there it is. Jacqueline Chepkoech adds Commonwealth gold to her World Under 20 gold in front of the uh, home crowd last year. Well, this is in front of a British crowd.